Uh, evening, guys. Welcome to Football with Brownie. Hope you're well, keeping safe, keeping each other safe and spreading our love during this pandemic because we all need a little bit of loving, Mark. We all need a little bit of loving. Now, before I go any further, please like, share. Most importantly, subscribe to Football with Brownie. Last time, last time Mark was on, your subscribers were half the amount it is now. Uh, so, all going well. Okay, tonight gives me great ple pleasure to get... We'll, Cardiff City Show, obviously the Cardiff City Show. Great pleasure, get uh, old friend uh, Mark Riley on, a.k.a. on Twitter, African Bluebird. Mark, how are you doing? Very good, very good, Brownie. You're, you're getting uh, very popular. Hope it doesn't well, go to your head. Popular by, uh, by being popular or popular by being a see you next Tuesday. I'm not too sure how it, how, you know, which, which way it is, but... Uh, the yeah. channel is growing anyway, and thanks to uh, you know to people like yourself with ongoing support. Um, right, where do we start? I think we'll, well, we'll start because, I, as I just mentioned, you know, the tra uh, channel has uh, increased in viewers and, and subscribers and so on. I do apologise if I'm asking the same questions as last time, Mark, but give a little bit of uh, an intro about yourself, about where you are in the world, why... And, uh, and your Cardiff City background as well. Uh, yeah, thanks, Brownie. Uh, yeah, it was August that we spoke last time. We spoke uh, transfer deadline day, and we saw all of those transfers coming through. Um, none, none for Cardiff, only <laughs> yeah. <players don't> have... <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, I'm in Uganda, so uh, I'm three hours uh, ahead of GMT and one hour behind you, Brownie. Yeah, we'll um, get on to that now. We'll get on to that now. Um, yeah, I live in Uganda. Been here twelve years. Um, I work. I work all over the world. Uh, I work for a fantastic organisation called Hope and Homes for Children, and okay. and essentially what they do is they help to develop child protection and child welfare systems in a lot of countries which need that kind of help. And and our primary focus is to end institutional care for children because it's very damaging for children. Children being and we've talked about this and about your background, yeah, Brownie. Yeah. Children being stuck in institutions. People think they're doing a nice thing by supporting a child in an institution. It's very damaging. One of the worst things you can do for a child to keep them in an institution. Most children who are in institutions, 85 to 90%, have at least one living parent. And yeah. all of them have some kind of family somewhere. So the organization I work for, dedicated to eradicating orphanages and developing healthy family care systems. Um, and we work in Romania. We did a lot of work in Romania um, since Ceausescu toppled to develop yeah. the child yeah. systems. Uh, we've done a lot of work in Rwanda where we've helped to reduce all of the institutions and have a lot more healthier community care for kids. Um, I'm in Uganda. I manage a big project in India. We're in Nepal. We're in South America, other, we're in South Africa, we're in Moldova, Bulgaria. So we're a big organization. Really? But our primary focus you're is... You're is clocking that. up the air miles, Mark. You're clocking up the air miles. Uh, I fly through Dubai quite a lot. Outside of the pandemic, I'm always in that uh, Dubai airport. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, know, I know. Oh, that airport does my head in sometimes. But uh, hey, it's, 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 good, it's good to hear, Mark, it's safe because of my backbone. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm quite open. I'm quite open about my background, but uh, uh, you know, even uh, being a counsellor for that for the worst job in the world, in which I I done for a short period of time, uh, it also gave me a, a bit of information. But you are right. It's it's you know, you do have some people who think they can talk on behalf of uh, behalf of people with difficulties, but sometimes that kind of Good wishing, good wishing kind of mindset isn't always the case, you know. Oh, and, Brandy, I tell you what, you're, you're so right. A lot of our work is to try to um, give a lot more agency to the people who are effects. So we have a lot of networks and help to support young adults who've been in care and, and are now adults about their experience and get them to become leaders. They're the experts. In yeah. fact, Brownie, you are an expert of what it's like to be brought up in a family you know, which which wasn't the one you were born into, and I know you've spoken yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so you you uh, you know adoptee voices. Those, those those are the people which should lead this, and you know we'll people like me just go into the background and let those be the experts. 
Well, um, as, for mean, Cardiff City, as for Cardiff City, um, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I've always supported Cardiff. Um, uh, from the time that I got taken, uh, yeah, I've been, you know, I'm 50 years old. I turned 50 last year, Brownie. Oh, I got a few years on you. Congratulations. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> how, much hair, how much gray hair have you got because of Cardiff City? Come on. Well, I, I tell you what, I tell you what, I have a stressful job um, and I support a stressful football team and, and, I, I run 10 kilometers every single day, Brownie. It's the only way I can cope. That's what I do. Oh, run 10 kilometers every day. That's why I, I've managed to stay uh, great, great, relatively great free. Brilliant. Brilliant. And what was your, fight, uh, your first game then, Mark? And, and when was it? Oh, mid-ish 80s. And my first game, funny enough, was a friendly against Swansea. And there was nothing friendly about it. Oh, I see. Um, yeah. So yeah, I got I got hooked. Of course, I've been in Indian Park to watch Wales before that, but uh, yeah, that's when I got hooked. Sort of late eighties, um, early early nineties. I mean, the the era where I really started watching City in 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 anger was really just about the Frank Barrows Eddie May time. Um, you know, when the club sort of uh, started to wake up a little bit. I've been yeah. been for ten years really in the doldrums. But uh, however, I would say Brownie. Even though we are playing at a much higher level than then, this is the least excitement I've ever had about watching Cardiff. I've always These said it. I've always said it. Um, you know, give me, give me the days of, you know, you know, lower league football is far better than what what uh, what Championship and you know Premier League. It, I don't know. I, I just think because you know the team is shit, right? Right, and and you know you expect. The, the team being shit it's kind of like maybe it's because of our, our, our generation now uh you know back then we were younger single guys partying no and you know damn well you know go for breakfast on saturday morning uh you know you're going to be it's an all day yeah? likely to come home the following day but, but sometimes that 90 minutes was the worst was the worst 90 minutes of the day and you just had you just wanted it to end because of it, it was like the, the kind of like camaraderie you had with your group of mates going to a football was just you know part of a part of a day. And I think I think now we are older. We, you know we don't have that kind of lifestyle anymore. You know I say anymore sometimes, but um, but it maybe it's a different kind of look at at it now, and the excitement just isn't there because you don't have the before the game excitement or the after game excitement with your mates. I don't know if if you would agree with that. Yeah, I mean, there was a, on on Mike Morris's board there was a um, a thread the other week. It might have been around Christmas time about the, the your favourite Cardiff City game, and even okay. though we've had quite a lot of really amazing games, you know, since when in the Premier League when we beat Man City. Beat Manchester United away, even though we were already relegated. The, do you know what my favourite Cardiff City game is? Nil nil against Cambridge away, nineteen ninety nine. <laughs> Any particular reason? We were down to eight man, Brownie. Oh, right, uh, right, right, okay. Richie Humphreys was playing for us, and I'd never seen Cardiff play with so much heart and like when we i mean nil nil i mean who picks yeah. a nil nil as their favorite game but it was just it was just historic we, and we could all sense you know as 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 it was as as the time was chipping away and we thought wow we, we might actually get a draw here you know and they were having the ball all the time we were down to eight man i mean the ref was useless he sent out players off for no reason to <laughs> but anyway we got it and at the end i tell you what we celebrated is it was better than winning the fa cup honestly it was yeah. so much fun. i was actually in australia then that's why i asked you was it uh, any uh, any particular reason i was actually out in australia so guys forgive me for not not being in attendance with you be honest with you. no no that's fine well i've missed obviously being out of the country for nearly 12 years i've missed quite a lot of games i was back in november and december i saw two games and and honestly that i was i the sheffield united game when we had a man when um morrison got sent off yeah. one that morrison gets sent off we were done after that really yeah. um yeah. manager maybe shown a little bit of naivety in terms of the formation again and um so yeah i mean i can't i can't um 
I can't muster much excitement at the moment. Um, I think Different people there as well, though, Mark. And I, I mean, I did, I did, as you know, I did, uh, you know, uh, finish my personal boycott against against going to the club ever since it, it turned from uh, uh, blue to red. Uh, I went and I I went a, a few times, but it's a completely different feel, different people. You know, I I be honest with you, oh, okay, many people re uh, recognize me from you, but from from back in the day, I'd be lucky to have known ten people, I, and I, I that's God's gospel. I'd be lucky to have known ten people throughout the concourse. So you know, if you're going down, um. You know, Vaninian stand and and uh, you know and I I was shocked the lack of people amount of people I actually remember from back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I don't mind. I, yeah, it's a difficult one. I know the club has to grow and develop, yeah. um, but I, I you know, and I understand all of that and the commercial aspects of the club. But I think I think Anis started a conversation on Twitter and on his message board today. I don't love his message board. I like I, I like the football chats on there. I think the football yeah. chats are great, but the politics, my God! Oh, I, 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 I stop. I'm, I'm banned from it. I'm banned. Yeah, from it. but Anis is right. Anis, Anis, Anis said we seem to have gone backwards since Tan have taken over. We've had yeah. a couple of, and, and I agree. We've had a couple of days in the sun. We've gone up to the Premier League. Twice since Tan has taken over, we've spent a shed full of money. But are we really a further forward as a club? No, I mean, we had that awful rebrand. I mean, I think there's been, I tell you what, Brownie, there's been no knowledgeable, passionate leadership at the top of the club. And I'm not talking about Tan, because at the end of the day, he's just an owner and he writes the checks. And it's an ego project for him, possibly. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't want to. I do think he cares about project. project. Which went maybe, wrong. maybe, maybe, maybe. But yeah. you know, you know, here we are. Really, str we would be, we would be two from bottom if it, if um, Redden and Derby hadn't been dog points. And you look at our sort of team and our squad, and on the playing side, you've got to. I've got to say. See, even if we were in the fourth division, right, at least you'd have a couple of players with a little bit of magic. It didn't happen very often because we were in the fourth division. But a little bit of passion, a little bit of flair, I mean, I just can't see that. Some of the youngsters coming through, probably not quite ready. That's why we've got a couple of youngsters from Manchester City and Leeds who I think are, are quite good, astute sign-ins. But it's just uh, it's just awful. The football side right. of things at Cardiff City is dreadful. Well, I tell you what, let's kick off. Let's kick off now. We really get into a bloody nitty gritty of Cardiff City. Let's let's start basically from our last conversation, <clears throat> which was it was under Mick McCarthy era. Uh, as as you mentioned already, uh, the transfer window was there. The I think that, well, definitely with myself, it was very telling of how the lack of pace we have had throughout the season in a centre-back era, uh, area. And it's very telling. Surely, I'm confused, you see. Mick McCarthy, whether people like him or not, he is an experienced manager. And something does tell me to think, surely... With the experience McCarthy had, there's no way he would have been fine with that kind of midfield area with complete Norfolk in creativity. Was he just, you know, looking back now, no hindsight is a great thing. Was he just a freaking lapdog who who just sat there for the money, knowing damn well he wouldn't he wouldn't be able to do anything with his team, and, and just waiting for the sack ever since the last. The last time we spoke on, on transfer deadline day, not in August. Uh, I don't know, Brownie. I'm a bit confused about Mick McCarthy as well. Because yeah. I think last year, you know, we went on that run and we saw maybe the best of Mick McCarthy. He motivated the team. We were quite difficult to beat. You know, the football wasn't pretty. But part of that is because he inherited a squad with almost no pace. But he, he did at least have Wilson and Ojo. Yeah. Um, who, who who could provide some spark? I mean, 
But then it, the summer transfer window last year was probably the worst summer transfer window we've ever had. I mean, I know Murphy blows hot and cold, but and I have no problem with players leaving Cardiff City. We'll come on yeah. to Kiefer Moore in a minute. I have no yeah. problems with players leaving Cardiff City. That's a part and parcel of... If, if sometimes fans get so attached to players that they cry and they get upset. Well, no, footballers get traded. It's just yeah. a part of life. You know, as even if a, even if there's a Cardiff boy that comes through the ranks and he gets sold, last football. We might not like it, but there's no point in getting upset about it. So I have no problem with people like Murphy leaving and, and Wilson going back and Ojo going back and Ho Hoylet being given a free transfer, Tomlin given a free transfer, White being sent out on loan. Um, you know, I have no problem with players leaving, but to, to leave a squad completely devoid of pace, creativity, and players which can move forward with the ball is unbelievable. I mean, yeah. poor, poor Giles. He's been the only one crossing. He's been, and now he's back at Wolves. He may there's talk of him coming back. Mm. Um, and and I and I and I'm thinking, well, who's who's doing was that? Was it Mick, who just wanted us play a certain way without any width, without any pace, and just continued to launch the ball into the box? Yeah. Or was he told by, or was he, or, or maybe he was told by the board, there's no money, we've got to get rid of players. You're going to have to use the youngsters. Um, but see, if it's the latter, Mick being experienced, should, um, you know, he is a character and he is quite a strong character. He should have said, no way. No way. No way can I uh, manage a team without any wingers at all and no pace and no flair. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and, you know, we predicted this on transfer deadline day when we didn't get anybody in and we thought, we have, we have screwed this year. We both agreed it was a disaster, yeah, and, and it's yeah. uh, and it was a uh, and the, and it was it wasn't even I wouldn't say it was even prophetic, Brownie. It was pretty obvious to everybody. And I think at board level, who's looking after the football side of things at board? Well, level? this comes on to this comes on to a point in which uh, I I don't know if we brought it up, uh, uh, you know, during the last uh, uh, chat. This. Uh, this new director from Malaysia, the young guy who never mentions Cardiff at all on his personal Twitter, apart from a time Liverpool. a Liverpool game, when we do, oh, I, I can't believe my luck or whatever he said. Giles comes in, and at that time, at that time, you know, the, the kind of like, um, the mood was upbeat amongst the fans, amongst the club as well. Giles comes in. You know, we've got uh, this guy on loan. I think Wintle was a, a, a few weeks prior to that. So the guy, so the, the new players and youngsters are coming in. This, now, apparently he's a financial part, uh, part uh, you know, financial expert, right? Uh, from another, part, another wing of Vincent Tan's uh, uh, company. He comes in, then all of a sudden, the transfer kind of, the transfer tactic, I suppose. Because remember, bail, bail, whether people want to believe it or not, the uh, you know the bail process was well and truly bloody uh, uh, running in the media and so on. But all of a sudden, more money comes in, boom, everything just stops. Uh, people start going, going out left, going on long, out of a club, left, right and centre. And it just kind of like... On, on, you know, the first part of the transfer window day, it was, right, we have an idea about how, how it go forward and you get youngsters in on loan and so on and so forth. Obviously, youngsters in which McCarthy's looked at or, the, or you know, the transfer bloody board have looked at because there's no way you would have had Giles in the first place had you not previously looked at him, on, in, uh, you know, in the previous season. You must have been keeping an, a good eye on him. But for... All that to just stop and have people, you know, going out left, right, and centre, or uh, going out left, right, and centre. I just, I just think it's a mad coincidence that this guy comes on the board and then everything is just uh, all the plans are thrown out of the window, and it's just created chaos ever since. You think? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I read it too much into that. Uh, no, I think, I think, I think he probably came in. I don't know much about him. He probably come in and looked at the books and thought, "Shit, we're in trouble." 
you know, we all knew that. We've got court cases coming up. If we lose those, who knows what's going to happen? Um, you know, we we. I think it's. I tell you what. I think everything just caught up with us this season, Brownie. You know, we 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 had no sort of way of developing the squad. We had no style of play. Well, we did have a style of play. It was rubbish. You know, <laughs> and, and I noticed today people on 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 Twitter were saying, "Oh, we need Warnock back to inspire the team." He will. You know. That would be a disaster because, yeah, he might just about keep us up. But I think the players are enjoying playing a little bit more football. If we're not enjoying playing, if we're not enjoying the results, we're not getting the results, and and that's the critical thing. But I think the players are seeing more of the ball. You know, I just don't think we got the players. I don't think we got the quality to to pull it off. And and I don't think if Warnock came in and the, I mean. We got a worse squad than when he left us, and he couldn't do anything with the squad when he left us. So I don't think he's going to come in and do much now. Um, so I think I think everything has caught up with us. Spending sixteen million pounds on this player, twelve million on that player, big wages. Wilson on big wages come in and the trans and and the loan fees. Ojo, and I think this season the board have said that's enough. And and the sad thing about it, Brownie. The sad thing about it is, if we'd been a better run club, right? And and some some of your listeners may disagree with me or laugh at this. If we'd been a better run club, and our finances had been more stable, and we hadn't take this taken this annual punt on expensive players, um, only for it to go wrong because we've been relegated, I think we would have had a chance of getting bail. We could have put a package together because we wouldn't have been breaking football fair play rules. And I think and I think he would have come. Actually, yeah. I, I I hear things. Yeah. You know, I, he's a Cardiff boy. We hear things. Yeah. He, he 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 wanted to come, and he could have come, but I think that the new guy maybe scuppered it, and the finance scuppered it, and and I think the club has just been very badly run on the football and finance side for a long time. Yeah, it's we just have done quite taking a can down the road, and it's caught up with him. I think so, and I think and I think that goes back to not having knowledgeable, passionate, strategic people at board level thinking about the football club. All they're thinking about is, you know, the gate receipts, the you know, uh, what's going to happen in the next couple of months rather than what's going to happen in a couple of years. I mean, and the truth is, Cardiff fans, we're a lot more resilient than people think. We don't want to always... You know, promotion is nice, but we'd rather have a nice, stable club, seeing the youngsters coming through, making sensible transfers. Um, you know, instead of trying to get players for 16 million like we used to, you know, we'd get we'd rather get players for a couple of million or a lot less from Peterborough or the lower divisions, and then like the Brentford model of transfers. I'm just gonna say, you, you must be reading my mind, I tell you, Mark. Brentford model yeah. is, so, is is up there on a pedestal for every lower league or EFL club to look at. Say, right, that financially is a way we need to go. Well, you've got to have this, you've got to have people that know about football, though, and you've got to have people yeah. who think, yeah. okay, this player, we evaluate him, and he's he's worth two million. We buy him for two million, and he'll come into the championship, and he'll score twenty goals, and we either use him to help us get promoted. Or we'll sell him on for what twenty six million. That's what they've been doing, and I think and I think it's a yeah. On the transfer side, I think Brentford are a good model. I think we're where I maybe wouldn't where Cardiff are slightly different to Brentford is. I like the fact that we've got an academy. I wouldn't scrap the academy. Like Brentford don't have an academy; they just have a reserve team which play friendlies and they play the same style. I I think that wouldn't work for Cardiff. I, I think location think... as well, though Brentford, Brentford. Look, uh, I'm, you know, with I think Brentford would struggle with a, an academy because you've got the Chelsea, the Fulham, the QPR, so really within a few miles of each other. Exactly. I think we've got to have an academy. I think yeah. we've got such a big catchment area for, for for players. We need that academy to bring them through. Now we haven't been doing it. And I think it's a bit unfortunate for some of those players that this year, you know, they're coming through in, in a relegation battle year and that's really hard for youngsters. Um, we should have been bringing these players through over the last few years, giving them a few games here and there. 
I'm telling you, yeah, you must be. I've, have you got a, some kind of uh, bloody camera in you? Because I've, I've writ, literally written down a next subject. I mean, come in, you linked it to it brilliantly. Um, I, I on about the key for more aspect, and it ah. went into. Hang on now, hang on now. It went into uh, comments went into the way Tan has been, you know. And someone said the amount of money. In which Tan has put into the um, into the academy, uh, you know, which is now paying off. You know what he done wrong, and I said, and I went back and thought, well, hang on, he went, he stopped, he be, he basically put a stop to the academy, looking for the Malaysian Maradona, and all he could, on all he could get was a bloody uh, Kazakhstan painter and decorator, right, um. Which have then allowed Swansea at Newport and all that to get into what was a proud Cardiff fan base network and take all the academies. You know, the likes of Joe Roden and all that they, they, they were able to take because Cardiff just switched off locally with local talent for, I would say, the best part of five to eight years. I love it. So even though now, you do have a like so uh, the young youngsters coming through. I'm I'm sorry, but it may have been it may he's may have put a, a few million into into that project now. But I am convinced he would have made tens of millions had he not put a stop to it back then, because he would have had the players in whichever clubs uh, had come in through the academy come in through a Cardiff instead and made and made money from them. I don't know if I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm, you know what? Okay, I'm blinkered. Honestly, though, Brownie, if my son, if my son had been good at football, and he's not particularly good at football, right? If my son had been good at football during those years, I probably wouldn't want him to have come to Cardiff um, Academy, even though he's a Cardiff fan and I'm a Cardiff fan. You know, all of his cousins and his his uncles are, are Cardiff fans. I, I probably wouldn't have wanted to because at the time, the academy there was no there was no gotcha. uh, streamlined streamlined football approach across the different age groups and up to the first team. So he was never you know even if he'd been wonderful, he would have never been able to play for the first team. He you know I, I tell you what if you ever speak to if you ever speak to um, some of the Cardiff players who left the academy. And who've gone on to other clubs? Um, uh, Rabbi Matondo. I mean, is I mean his agents are saying to him, you know what? You're never going to get in a Cardiff side, even though I think he could have. Now he could be playing for Cardiff now, but the truth is, our academy was so poorly run until Bellamy came and and changed it. And I and Morrison did a very good job when he came in. Yeah. Um, to, yeah. to change it, and it is interesting that the results have started to not be so great since Morrison's in the first team. Although you know, mm -hmm. it's a bit un mm -hmm. it's a bit unfair on Darren Purse because Purse has only been there, you know, a couple of weeks really. So let let's see. I don't know. I think I think the problem is with the academy is that uh, some of those players should have been more developed by now. Some of the players are not mm -hmm. that young, you know. Yeah. But, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. Bowen, like, isn't, Bowen isn't that young. He's not an 18-year-old. He's in his 20s. And yeah. and he should have had more first-team exposure now, by yeah. by now. Uh, um, and, and he hasn't had it. And he's getting it now, but in a team which is really not very conducive for bringing in youngsters. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how the lone youngsters do. I think Giles did very well. I, I think yeah. I don't th I think our youngsters, even though they're a bit older than even some of the loans we're bringing in, I don't think that they've... You know, I don't think they've quite, they haven't got to the level where they can yeah. come in and perform yeah. consistently Again, in the first goes, team. It goes down to your previous point. It's like, you know, the opportunities just haven't been there. Because the, because the thing is with managers, you know, they they know they always, this is why uh, Jose Mourinho is defensive. So, well, hang on. I haven't had the, the, the games which I could put the youngsters in because every game, if I lose every game, I'm going to be out of a job type of thing. Uh, and, and you know, that's kind of like with imbalances, I think. Um, yeah. I also I also do think that, the, the, seriously, 
something needs to be looked at. I we are old enough to remember the Pont in the Reserve League or, or or something like that. And and I I do think that it's a, too much of a step. This under twenty three lock, I, I've never liked. You know, I've never liked it. You know, it should be a proper re- bring back proper reserve team football, in my opinion. Um, and um, because I, I do think that some of these players, even though they, they you know, they're showing glimpses of, of good promise, I do think that they, there's another step in which they're missing because, because the, you know, the gap between championship football and bloody under 23 is just massive. Yeah, well, I, it's funny though. It's only now we've started to send some of the under twenty threes on loan, and I think that's a good thing. We've yeah. got a loanee from Leeds. We've got a loanee from Man City. Why haven't we been loaning some of our youngsters out to get yeah. the ones we think are maybe twelve months away from our first team? We've just shoved them straight into the first team, and I think that's been a mistake. I think yeah. they should have probably gone and got a bit of a rough and tumble in in League One or, or League Two. Yeah. And now that started to happen. So obviously with um, Zimba, and he's done pretty reasonably well at Northampton so far, and he's getting better yeah. every game. So I think I think I think we've now started to do that. Uh, and uh, listen, we've been a bit down on the club. If we can manage, <laughs> I know, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a fucking, I'm going to get a bloody uh, rope out. I'm telling you, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but if we can manage to stay up this year, Brownie, and if yeah. we can, and if a couple of these court cases go in our favour, and if Morrison is still at the club in the summer, we can have a bit of a rebuilding exercise there. We've got a lot of players out of contract. Um, we've got a lot of players which I think Morrison knows the kind of players we need. I, I, I'm, I'm still unsure about him. I mean, I was 100% behind him when he took over. I am a little less behind him now, only because the results really haven't come through. Well, but I'm, I, I'm similar. I'm similar, but it's not about the results. You know, I, I some of his comments, I don't, I'm, I'm not at ease with, if I'm honest. Some of his public comments, I'm not, I, I'm not easy with, or at ease with. No, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think he's been a bit naive um, yeah. verbalizing some of those public comments. I, I think. Yeah. I, but but I think I think the good thing is there was a pretty big backlash from the fans about the comments um, about uh, Davis, and yeah. I think he's uh, and I think he's probably learned from that, and yeah. hopefully he has. If you don't learn, then then he's got no hope. But 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 things could turn around for Cardiff quite quickly, dis- despite all of the problems that we said. The, the issue is is getting to the end of the season and staying in this division. I mean, I've seen comments saying, well, it wouldn't be so bad if we go down. You know, we can rebuild. We can get rid of the deadwood. Well, we can do that now. We don't need to go down to do that. Yeah, we can, yeah. we can financially we can re- Oh, it'll be dreadful. The difference between income in the championship uh, and League One is, is a significant difference. Massive. Um, I think, uh, I don't know if you know Kira Maguire, the price of football, you, can't, you know, very, very uh, um, uh, keen on, on listening to his podcast. He's been on his show as well. Basically, he's football football finance expert and he, can, and he constantly rams into, you know, supporters who, who write in, like Cardiff fans, uh, you know, um, and it's been Derby fans, obviously. Because, uh, but, the way in which the finance, the finance, EFL finances the, the structure, 80% of EFL money goes to championship clubs. League One has 12%. So it's 12% divided by what? 22, 24 clubs. 24 and then League Two has 8%. Right? You can you imagine the kind of figures in which, you know, it, it, it is massive. And they... Listen, we are bigger clubs in Cardiff in League One who have cut, who have struggled to get out of League One. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 League One's a hell of a division to get out of now. Yeah, we need to stay in this division, and then we need to rebuild in the summer. And and you know we need a couple of these court cases to go in our favour. Um, you know, okay, Brownie, keep them all. Uh, Sell him. You know my love. You know my loving for Kiefer Moore. You know my loving for. Go on. You start off. You start off. Go on. Um, mixed feelings. Mixed okay. feelings. I think it depends on the price at the end of the day. 
Yeah. And it depends on whether or not we can get a significant amount of that money to reinvest in the team. Um, he's 29. Um, he's had a poor season. But I think that's a reflection of two things. One is his constant battle with COVID. And two is, honestly, the dire football that we've been playing, yeah. you know, is not conducive for a striker like Kiefer Moore. Uh, you know, he's a guy that's going to thrive on crosses. We haven't yeah. been crossing the ball. Giles, Giles, Kiefer started to score when he was in the team when he came back after his sort of delayed start to the season. He did yeah. start to score a few goals, but that was when Giles was playing a bit further up the pitch. Morrison has put Giles now as left wing back, and he's not he's not crossing so much. So that's taken one one avenue of crossing away. And you can see him, he's totally despondent yeah. on the pitch. And, and, and if he doesn't want to be there, because the football is so frustrating and because he's 29 and wants an opportunity to maybe go up, I, I would say sell him as long as I, we can reinvest the money. Wow, well, that's another point as well. Um, I, I have had it on real good authority and I've said it for quite a while now. I've had it on real good authority. He hasn't been, he has, he has never settled in Cardiff. I've had it on real good, even before, you know, people say, oh, he's had his uh, bloody, uh, uh, you know, since the, the Wolves transfer fell through. Um, I do love Kiefer Moore, I'll be honest with you. And I think the only thing now, he, because he's been such a late developer within his career, um, I think it's now or never but for his opportunity in the Premier League. And you know what? Of 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 what he's done, you know, he's helped us throughout bad times previously. I would have absolutely no issue on, on him trying to... Uh, have his, he deserves an opportunity in the Premier League. If Chris Wood can go for 25 million, I've seen Chris Wood, well, we've seen Chris Wood so many times at Leeds and Burnley in Championship level. But guys, a car right? In my opinion, Kiefer Moore is a much better striker uh, than, than Chris Wood. Um, but it's getting the Premier League clubs to take a punt on Championship uh, players. That, that's always been the issue. Well, 29 year old, 29 year old Championship players. Yeah, I know. I mean, I, think, I mean, look, they take, they do take punts on on championship players. I mean, you know, Brentford was a supplier of most of the strikers in the Premier League over the last <laughs> yeah, few years, yeah, yeah. And, they, and, we did, and most of them came from Peter Pratt. Um, uh, but, 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 yeah, it's it's his age, yeah. which I think, and also there is a perception. I think Premier League clubs, certainly Premier League uh, clubs fans, have a perception that he's a bit of a Chris Wood and a bit of a Cardos. You and I, we know, because we've seen him so much for Wales yeah. and we've seen him for City, we know when he gets decent service, he's fantastic on the floor. Oh, I he's know. Brilliant. And, and, and his, defensive, uh, his defensive work is, is really, you know, if, if a team is up against it, clearly seen it in the Euros as well. You know, Wales were up against, uh, up against the cross. He would be back there doing all the defensive work. Um, honestly, uh, you know, his all-round game... Is fantastic. He, well, he's, on, he's on another level. When I've seen, you know, in my uh, in few occasions live, completely on another level. People say, oh, you didn't look bloody interested. Right? Okay. You may not look interested in certain parts of game, but you could tell the, the kind of like uh, runs he was making off of, off of ball runs. Kind of, you know, the intelligence is there. And, and, and yeah. it's like, you say, he was on a completely different level to the other uh, to the other players, and that's probably why he's really pissed off if he if rumours are to be true. Yeah, and I think I think if you're, a, I mean, it is quite remarkable that we have a, a how tall is he? Six foot four, six foot five. Yeah, six five. Yeah, we've got a six foot five striker who scored twenty goals for us last season, and we haven't got any wingers in the team to to deliver crosses. <laughs> I mean, it's. It's stupid. I mean, yeah. you you couldn't you couldn't you couldn't make it up. It's so outrageous, really. And I don't blame I don't blame Morrison for that because no, he no. he he's obviously recognizing that. Um, but what do you do if you don't have any wingers? You can't all of a sudden go and buy five or six wingers and get them to compete because we just yeah. don't have the funds. 
So it is very tricky for Morrison, despite my reservations about him. I think he's 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 doing quite a good job in the transfer market. The, the yeah, I, problem with Keith Moore is if the Keith Moore you just described, the Keith Moore you just described for Wales and City last year, if he was playing like that now and we were giving him, we wouldn't be in trouble. Um, the, the problem is is that we haven't got Ojo to deliver crosses, who was a much better player than people yeah. give him credit for. We haven't got Harry Wilson to yeah. make those runs inside and feed him the ball or to cross the ball. That's we've right. got we've, we've literally got nobody. So I, I think it's really, really difficult. And I think it's a big ask for youngsters like Kieran Evans and for Isaac Davis to to consistently deliver those kind of balls yeah. at, at at championship level when they've only been playing under twenty threes games for us uh, which is which goes back to what you said the gap is quite quite big so i think uh, overall i think we probably you know i would be happy to get a decent amount for him what is get a decent a amount then, mark why is a decent amount to you you got to be realistic brownie i think 7 million would be would be reasonable at this point he's is that you know, we would million, have, is that 7 million uh, you know up front up front, up front. Yeah. yeah 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 i i, I, I agree I, with you i agree with you i, th I think i okay i'll take i'll take on board the uh, uh, goal scoring or format and being on par last year so I'll, I'll, I'll take a hit on three million you know from yeah. from the 10 million which right so i take a hit no worries at all but i'm not i'm not prepared to uh as a supporter whether it, the rumours are true, but it seems to have some kind of uh, something behind them. Whether it is three million up front or three million plus add-ons, which uh, could lead to five, four, five million. And you know, because I'm sure one of those add-ons would be if you get to the Premier League. But if you look at where Bournemouth is, Bournemouth is at the moment they're dropping points like hell. Blackburn are, are in. You got Fulham running away with it. That's the end of them. You know. So whether or not. That, those add-ons would actually come into play. I'm not even too sure. So it's called a five anything, million. No, we ain't got anything, accept that. anything less than five million plus two or three million add-ons would would actually not be worth it because you know we would make that amount of money if he comes into our team and starts scoring goals until the end of the season to keep us up. The other yeah. thing is, I think we owe I think we owe Wigan money. Yeah, Wigan, yeah. So, um, so three million, I think it works out. I think it's about um uh three, I think it's around about ten percent rounded mm -hmm. off. So it'll be it'll end up being two point seven five, maybe two point two point seven, something like yeah. that. I don't I, I don't know the exact figure, but it yeah, there is a sell on clause there. So <laughs> I think but but the thing is though, Brownie, even if we sell Keith for more and even if we get Jars back we would need another striker in because I quite, you know, I quite like Collins, but Collins has the same problem as Kiefer Moore in our side. Yeah. He he's quite an industrious striker. You know, when he gets a de decent cross, you know, yeah, he had missed a few chances earlier in the season, but he's proved he can score. The problem yeah. is the lack of ball to him. So what he tends to do is he goes looking for it. He goes down to the wing, he's in midfield, he's He's fighting battles on on the on the wing because because he's just so frustrated and not getting any ball. Um, yeah. And I think maybe Doyle will fix that problem a little I bit because Doyle, I, 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 Doyle I, I, looks, uh, a promising debut. I think a promising debut. Yeah, I think he was. I think he was our best player. Yeah, yeah. It um, we're in. We linked to uh, that guy from Middlesbrough, right? Um, a bit it, of yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the, the surname and not me because I would I would have killed it. <laughs> but I, uh, I I think he's the kind of player that we realistically could get. I mean, we're not going to get. I mean, I think that we got a lot of youngsters now, and I think it would be a big chance to take another striker on loan from the Premier League who maybe hasn't been proven. I mean, if it was if it was somebody maybe 23, 24. And they've been on loan and they've done it before and scored goals in the championship great um somebody like that would be fine but the reality is is 
I, I don't think that we've already taken a punt on quite a few youngsters on loan. We've got our own youngsters. If we put in, if more leaves to put that level of responsibility on a youngster on loan, yeah, yeah, it's too much. So I think I think we need a bit more experience, a bit more. I, a bit I, more I, I agree with you smartness. on it. I, I was thinking. I was thinking. You see. So I Fenza would be good. Like, like I actually Dwight think Gale. he would be I was good. Thinking Dwight Gale. Yeah, yeah. Somebody smart. Somebody yeah. that's going to win us some penalties. Somebody that's going to be a nuisance. Somebody that can rough it with 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 championship defenders. Yeah. Um, the guy from Middlesbrough, I think he would be good. He's he's got a bit of pace. He's good in the air. He's 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 not the most technically gifted player. I mean, he's not going to pick up the ball on the you know on the on the wing and dribble in like Kiefer Moore can. But you know, I think we've got to be realistic. We're not going to have any money, even if Kiefer Moore gets sold. I think I think it depends. As, I think they talked about like half a million. Well, yeah, yeah something like that. Something it's pretty. Like that. He's not on huge wages. I think realistically, somebody like that could see us through to the end of the season and do okay for us. I think he'd score three or four goals. That might be all that we need. We we just need to scrape results to to stay up. What do you think? Do you think it's alarming that we're not looking at the centre? We've got, we've looked at the centre midfield area. We've got Doyle and, and you know uh, Giles, mate. If you want to count him as a wide player or, or left wing, do you think it's quite alarming? There's no talk really of of uh, you know backup or, or cover, extra cover for a centre back area, especially if they're playing three in the back. Uh, I th- I think. I, I think it's a good point, Brownie. I think the problem, I think the problem with our team and our defense is even if you change the defenders without changing the formation, you're going to have the same problem. You might be slightly better if you had a little bit more pace in there, but tactically, they they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, two players go for a pl- go for the ball. You know. A little, you know, the opposition, one little pass, and all of a sudden, a forward is in acres of space. Yeah. Happens every game. Happens every game. Um, so, so I and, and we we have, you know, in Nelson and um, Morrison and Flint and McGuinness, we've got four central defenders there. And I would I would probably argue that all of them could play in the championship. The the, yeah. the problem is is twofold. Is one is they haven't got much pace between them. The second thing is, if you think of the way we play, because our because we are so starved of any creativity and forward play, our wing backs and uh, uh, not they haven't been very good going forward. Yeah. And and sometimes that those three centre and they get caught out of position a lot at the time. Those three centre backs are covering what four players should be covering. So even though sometimes we say we play in five at the back. I think sometimes we play three at the back with very inefficient wing backs. So right. what are you I, doing? I went to that Bristol City home game. That was the first game back for me, right? And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I, it was. We played four in the back then. I had Marson Flint to the centre half, and I said it even uh, after the show. Um, they were both cart horses, and they were it was freaking alarming. You had that Wayman. Took the absolute piss out of Flint, and then what, lo and behold, you done exactly the same over the weekend. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it was a very poor positionally, performance. you know, Flint is terrible on the floor, right? Positionally, he's just his brain is just not there uh, half the time, and rather than standing up, you know, he he he, he dives in, at no one no. I've got no problem with defenders diving in if they think they can get the ball. I've got no problem at all on that. However, now, the way the rules have changed over the years, you know, since our bloody playing day, um, surely defenders need to know, right, if I am going to dive in, there has to be cover. You know, there has to be cover, just in case I don't win the ball, you know, at least some... But they're diving in without no bloody... Whether it's knowing they got no cover and just chancing it. But that's what a lot that's why a lot of the bloody centre backs seem to be Nelson, just chancing it. And then they get caught out and then they wonder then why the fans are on the back. Just stand up. Just stand up to these bloody players. 
make it hard for them to get past you. Don't yeah. dive into the ground and make it far easier. And then, be, and then it makes it far easier because you've got no cover uh, bloody helping you out. I, I, I find it, I find it appallingly bad defensive uh, uh, a kind of... And it's from experienced players. I, yeah, I, I, and the thing is, the odd thing is, the odd thing is last year, in the beginning of this season, under Mick McCarthy, they weren't making those kind of mistakes. Yeah. So, I mean, and then all of a sudden Mick McCarthy decided to just keep pumping, pumping, you know, defenders into the team and we were still conceding goals. So his response was to make it more defensive. We were still conceding goals. What I would like to see us is start to play further up the pitch, keep the ball more, create more chances, put a little bit less pressure on the defence. But, but also, you are right, I, the defence is going to have to change in the summer. Um, but I would like to see us play for the back because I think that NG isn't a wing back. He's a he's a he's a, he's a full back. Issue is we don't have a we don't have a left left back. Yeah. Um, you know, so I'd like I, we'd need a left back. Um, uh, we've to be honest, we've never been the same since Bennett left. Ben yeah, Ab- I, I knew I, because <laughs> I just I seen him on Twitter earlier, and he was saying you know back on a pitch. Um, I'm just wondering, do you think it's a link? You know, pe- many people do think, you know, conspiracy. The thing is, with Cardiff City fans, a lot of them are <laughs> conspiracy theorists. You know, sometimes, they, you know, man never landed on the moon. And then, and then in the same breath, they say, reason why Flint and Morrison ain't playing is because they trade contracts up in the summer. Do you, do you, do you buy that? Uh, do you buy into that or not? No, I think Morrison would. I think I think Sean Morrison had a poor run of form, and he was dropped. And I think that he probably needs to be given another chance now because currently it's not working. Even though he's not a, the fastest, I think we need his experience and his leadership qualities. Um, I think I think also sometimes the defence is under a lot of pressure, Brownie, because the midfield in front of them. You know, I think Pack who's a very good passer of the ball, occasionally, I think he's very slow and very yeah. ponderous, and I don't think he tracks his men. You know, if he's supposed to do that job in front of the back three, he doesn't do it very well. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah. we've conceded a lot of goals when they there seems to be part of the Red Sea. Midfield and defence, you know, it's like... <laughs> you know, these are we are playing good teams, and Bristol City are not a brilliant team but you can't give them the level of space that we were giving them in front of our yeah. goal i mean it was it was it was bonkers um you know so i don't know the the, the reality is the whole you know we are going to lose six or seven players in the summer because their contracts are up and it'll be interesting to see if we replace them but it all depends what division we're in brownie hopefully yeah. we're in the championship well, I tell you what, Mark. I'm gonna have to. We're gonna have to knock you on the head there because I got his watch along. I'm being. I am being careful. I got the West Brom bloody press. Who do you fancy that game, West Brom press? And... Uh draw. I reckon. I don't think West yeah. Brom are particularly great this season. I think Preston yeah, I can cause problems. I think uh, Preston are a better, a better side than us for sure. And also, as well, me and Mark had this uh, kind of like uh, kind of debate, right? And I want people to answer this question. Right? Is it the clock? Uh, am I ahead of Mark or behind Mark in the time? Right? <laughs> right? We tried to get a, a, a kickoff time for this show. And um, officially, it would be, uh, I think I'm an hour ahead of Mark. Right? It's, it's you are. Count- yeah. All right. Okay. Because before Mark, when he said, "No, I'm, uh, I'm a hour, I'm an hour behind." Oh, I think, uh, yeah, yeah. I think. <laughs> right. Okay, so you bow, down, you bow down to uh, my uh, uh, my correctiveness, then, Mark. Yeah. Well, we, you you got to be a bit of a time lord to work out all these time zones now. <laughs> I know. I I just, no. To be honest, I just thought it was dodgy second <laughs> I, second school education in which I, I in which I was in. I I do a point. Oh, you were right. You you were you were at you are now at midnight. Coming to midnight. Yeah, I'm at right. eleven, and the UK is eight. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's it. So it, it will have to. Mark, where can people find you? Uh, on Twitter, uh, is it? Look me up on Twitter, African Bluebird. 
And uh, honestly, you'll enjoy every single moment of his uh, Twitter content. He, uh, he does like uh, ruffling a few feathers, that's for sure. But for many, sure. Many, many thanks, Mark. Much appreciated. See you soon, Bernie, and I'll see you in Dubai, actually, at some point. Well, let me know when. Let me know. And uh, we, can have a, we can have a quiet drink. We can have a quiet yeah, drink. Yeah. Somewhere. Okay, take care. Cheers, Bernie. Have a good Come on, city. Come on. Come on.